Good morning, I'm Evan Sandberg, and today is Thursday, February 11th. It is also Make Our Friend Day, so in keeping with everything we have learned and are still learning about kindness, empathy, and love in our advisory classes, let's make sure you make a friend today or reconnect with someone you hadn't been in touch with in a while. Come on, you can do it. For all of our readers, there will be a free live virtual event sponsored by Lacey Loves to Read, featuring the famous author Jason Reynolds. This event will be on February 18th, 2021 at 1.30 to 2.15 via Zoom. The link will be posted February 18th. Many of you will soon be reading his newest book, Stamped, as part of your curriculum. However, many of you might have already read one or more of his books like Ghost or Long Way Down or Miles Morales, Spider-Man. So look for the link on February 18th. Now, here's Addison with some birthday shout outs. Thanks, Cal. Celebrating birthdays this week are, and excuse my pronunciation, Baron Allen, Hannah Anderson, Riley Hall, Jade Hartung, Pillar Hidalgo, Lorelai Kelly, Wesselum Codapair, Lobby Makaka, Kendall McSwain, Taliana Salonga, Ikaika Tomic, Kennedy Ukalma, and Elena Wetstein, and our CSI teacher, Mr. Philippi. We also want to give a shout out to our custodian, May, who celebrated her birthday last week. One thing we would like to do during our Mustang message is highlight some of our great teachers here at Thurgood Marshall. We would like to welcome Mrs. Stevick to Teacher Talk. How long have you been teaching at Marshall? That's a good question. I think I've been teaching 10 years here. I started with one year teaching seventh grade and then I've been in sixth grade ever since. So mm -hmm. I think it's about 10 years. What shows are you into? Oh, shows. Um, I There's a show called Chuck. And it doesn't it doesn't air anymore. It's an older show, but it's super fun. Um, it's the same actor that does Shazam. And Lost is another show that I love. Mm -hmm. What do you like to do when you're not teaching? Mm, all kinds of things. Um, I run. Trail running is a huge thing, and mountain biking. Uh, I surf a little bit. I have. Uh, recently taken up wood carving. So I'm like carving little animals out of wood blocks. It's really fun. Uh, and then a lot of reading. What do you hope never changes? What I hope never changes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that, um, oh, this is interesting. I hope that that human beings never lose hope that things can get better because we live in such a weird time right now where it feels like things are dark and things can't be changed and things can't be fixed. So I hope we maintain a spirit of like, mm -hmm. we can love other people more. We can um, relate to other people more and we can communicate about our differences better. What's your claim to fame? <laughs> Okay, so some students know this. I actually was on a TV show, one, just a few episodes. Mm -hmm. It was it's called the Spartan? Spartan Ultimate Challenge, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was four siblings and I, and we did this obstacle course race on TV, and we, we definitely lost, but it was really fun. Like muddy mm -hmm. events and like climbing things and stuff like that. It was really fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. What skill would you like to master? Mastery skill. <laughs> so this is a tricky question. For, I've thought about this and I think that I would dabble in everything as opposed to mastering anything. So I think I think I'd rather just play with a lot of things mm -hmm. instead of coming mm -hmm. What what's the farthest you've ever been from home? Probably uh, Zimbabwe, Africa. It was like forever on a plane. <laughs> and then really different than here too. So like lots of mud huts and uh, like really different. What is the most heartwarming thing you've ever seen? The most heartwarming thing I've ever seen. You know, a, a few years ago when I was teaching, there was a kid who was always getting in trouble and, and kind of doing the wrong things. And um, he asked for a pair of shoes and it turns out that he didn't he didn't have any shoes of his own, but he was asking for a pair of shoes. And we finally, we scrounged around the school and found a pair of shoes. And it turned out that he wasn't even asking for himself. We found another student who did a pair of shoes and was asking for somebody else. It kind of broke my heart. It was amazing. It was the neatest. It's a kid who didn't have 
what he needed, but he was looking out for somebody else. And that was... That the makes point. a bunch of sense. Thank you for answering my questions. It was awesome, and Cal, you did a great job. Did you know that in addition to the United States, Valentine's Day is celebrated in Canada, Mexico, the United Kingdom, France, and Australia? In Great Britain, Valentine's Day began to be popularly celebrated around the 17th century. By the middle of the 18th century, it was common for friends and loved ones to exchange small tokens of affection or handwritten notes. And by the 1900s, printed cards began to replace written letters due to improvements in technology. Americans probably began exchanging handmade valentines in the early 1700s. In, 1840, in the 1840s, Esther A. Holland, known as the mother of Valentine, made elaborate creations with real lace, ribbons, and colorful pictures known as scrap. Today, according to the Greeting Card Association, an estimated 145 million Valentine's Day cards are sent each year, making Valentine's Day the second largest card sending holiday of the year behind Christmas. So don't forget to send your friends or loved ones a Valentine's Day note. Hey Thurgood Marshall Mustangs, I'm Aria Cornwall and we're back with another episode of the Cornwall Connection. Today we are going to talk about hair love and the history of black natural hair in America. In early African nations, hair can signify a person's family, tribe, or social status. Hairstyles can also indicate many things for different occasions. Women would shave or not do their hair when they mourned a loved one and warriors would braid their hair to prepare for war. During the transatlantic slave trade, millions of Africans were kidnapped and taken to America where they were forced to labor as enslaved peoples. Slaveholders would cut off slaves' hair so that they wouldn't recognize anyone from their tribe or family. Slaveholders even referred to their hair as wool in an attempt to dehumanize them. After so many years of seeing their hair as beautiful and sacred, Africans were now told that their natural hair made them inferior to Western society. Slave traders even placed more value on lighter skinned Africans with softer hair because they believed that an enslaved person with darker skin and kinkier hair was less attractive and worth less. The struggle of hair continued even after slavery ended in 1865. As Arya said, black people, specifically those with darker skin and kinkier hair, were looked down upon even more. In an attempt to assimilate to white American and Eurocentric beauty standards, many black people chose to straighten or chemically relax their hair. The chemicals in the products that they used would often burn their scalp and critically damage their hair. Madam CJ Walker was a victim of a scalp disease that made her lose most of her hair. This disease pushed her to mix home remedies and store-bought hair products to improve her condition. In the course of her experiments, she was able to come up with different hair products specifically for black hair, such as Wonderful Hair Grower and Vegetable Shampoo. Starting in 1908, she was able to open up a beauty college in her own manufacturing company. By 1919, she had stores nationwide with over 25,000 black women as her sales agents. Madam C.J. Walker was so successful that she became the first American woman to become a self-made millionaire. Afros became popular among teenagers in the 1960s. Black teenagers were tired of the oppression and brutality of white societal beauty standards. At a time when African American men had short and conservative hairstyles, the Afro was a sign of rebellion towards the white conformity. Black hair has been criticized for centuries and it has been deemed as messy, unprofessional, and improper compared to the neat and respectable Eurocentric standards of straight hair. Black people, specifically black women, have been denied jobs or treated differently because of how they choose to wear their hair. This only changed recently when a law had to be passed in the state of California to accept and respect black people's hair in schools and in workplaces. In 2019, Senator Holly Mitchell draft and sponsored the Crown Act, which stands for Create a Respectful and Open Workplace for Natural Hair. This law was passed on July 3rd by Governor Gavin Newsom, making it illegal for employers or school officials to enforce dress code or grooming policies against hair such as afros, braids, twists, and locks. California was the first to pass the Crown Act. Sadly, only six other states have passed similar laws. There shouldn't have to be a law to protect black people from hair discrimination. But since there is, then we hope to see this law passed in all 50 states. 
Hair to a white person could just be hair, but to a black person, it could be job security, social acceptance in schools, and a constant reminder of the violations our ancestors faced. With that being said, no, you cannot touch my hair. Why? Well, consent is a huge issue, not just with relationships, but with our own personal space. So the act of reaching out and touching someone else's hair without consent touches on many different levels of generational racism and current racism. My hair is not something to be judged and it's not for your amusement. You can't touch my hair because it's mine and it's a part of me. Touching my hair is total violation of personal space and is blatantly disrespectful. Please don't touch my hair. In this next interview, one local Olympia School District alumni shares her hair journey with us and how she used her hair expression and solidarity in a way to bring people together all over Seattle and Western Washington through the creation of Instagram videos on her account at Seattle Black Hair Network. Please welcome to the Cornwall Connection, Miss Lowell Mack Wilson, a former Jefferson Middle School alumni and a Capitol High School alumni class of 2016. She graduated from Seattle University last spring and now works for the Thurston County Chamber of Commerce as a project assistant for customer solutions and communication. Hello, everyone. We know you founded the Seattle Black Care Network. Tell us more about this network. What prompted you to start it? What, who else is involved? How can students, families, and communities access this network? So the Seattle Black Hair Network is an Instagram page. And in that Instagram page, um, I interviewed people who went to Seattle U, members of my family, um, all Black people, all different types of Black people, um, like mixed race people, dark skinned people, um, older people, younger people, children, uh, different genders, men, women, non-binary people. So I really tried to get a whole spread of people involved. And it was for my uh, senior project. And I really just wanted to talk with them about their hair and, you know, the good and the bad things that have happened to them because of their hair. Um, and so I, I uh, started that project and it took a while. I had to edit all the videos. I honestly, I, have, I haven't even finish all of them because there are two more that I really need to finish and I just keep putting it off. Um, but yeah, and, and I also wanted to talk to people with different textures. So I have like 4C, locks, looser curls, um, do you want like box braids, all different types of stuff. Yeah, so there's the Seattle Black Hair Network Instagram page and there's, it's also on my personal YouTube. Thanks. What suggestions do you have for teens around activism, representation, or and or hair love? I think first of all, when you're you know starting to take care of your hair more yourself, and it's not your parents, I think it's really important to not compare your hair to other people's, right? Because depending on what type of hair you have, you could have a completely different process that works for you and as long as your hair is healthy and um and moisturized right you don't want to go out looking dry and crusty um you know then then your hair is is good to go right and mm -hmm. and you can take suggestions from other people you're like hmm somebody tried this maybe i should try it but not everything that works for somebody else is going to work for you so just learning through trial and error and being willing to try things and see what works best for you is really important. Um, just activism in general, I think the first step in activism is learning as much as you can about what you're trying to fix, right? Because you don't want to go into a situation looking dumb um, or making yourself look dumb because you don't know enough. And if you don't know, be willing to say, I'm not sure that I can do more research on this and I can learn right um and and accept when you don't know something but know what you know about when did you like start loving your hair or like was it an always process but like, did you always love your hair that's a different way to put it so i've always been natural but i don't think i always like loved loved my hair for a long time um i thought of it it just like got in the way there was a lot of it and i didn't really know how to 
take care of it on a day-to-day -day basis to where I could really manage it myself. Um, and I went through like phases where I liked it better straight or I, um, I didn't straighten it all the time, but I, I did like it better straight. And it wasn't even necessarily that I liked how it looked better straight. I liked that it was easier to take care of when it was straight. Um, and so when I was like a junior in high school and I, that was kind of the beginning of the natural hair movement and everything, um, I really started to love it more and wear it out more because I used to wear it up all the time. But then I like really badly heat damaged it. So I had to cut it all off, like up to here. Um, and that, you know, really hurt. And that was kind of something where it was like, I do really love my hair and I do really want it to be healthy. Um, and it kind of took me having to chop it off for me to really think about it like that. Um, and having to like put in the time and effort to grow it out again. And so I, yeah, probably when I was about a junior in high school is when I really started to love it. And side question, when you were in the Olympia School District, did anybody try to touch your hair? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, like, if I know you well enough and you ask, I might say yes. You know, I, I get it. It's cool. It's like big. It's textured in different ways. And as long as you don't, like, rake your finger through it or something and you ask first, then then I, I'm okay with it. But, um, I mean, I've had strangers at like concerts walk up to me and like grab the back of my head. Um, and it's weird, like I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> so why are you doing that to me? Uh, thank you again, Ms. Laurel Mac Wilson for joining us at the Cornwall Connection. It was a pleasure to have you and we hope to collaborate with you again too. Yes, this is so much fun. Thank you, ladies. Before we say goodbye, we have a quick reminder that Monday the 15th and Tuesday the 16th, we will not have school due to the President's Day and my birthday. Just kidding. The 16th is midwinter break, so enjoy it. We will resume class schedule on Wednesday. Have a great weekend.